Hey, good morning, everyone. Pastor Christian here. Uh, Tuesday, March 31st. Um, is that right? Let's see. January, February, March. How many of y'all do that thing? I, like, I learned which months have 30 and which ones have 31 using the knuckles. Did y'all learn that rule? So if you start with the knuckle here, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So March, it's a big knuckle, so therefore it has 31 days. Some of y'all just learned something right now. You're welcome for that. That's free. Um, so here's here's where we're going with this. Uh, it is Tuesday, March 31st. Tomorrow is April Fool's Day, and uh, I don't I don't know if America is ready. I know some of y'all, man, you got the gift of April Fools, and so I'm just gonna. I don't know. You're gonna have to use some wisdom. Gonna have to use your best judgment to, to determine if what you got is is the best uh, for everybody involved. It's a crazy time in our world. Uh, you know, when we go through hard times in our lives, we, we go back to foundational moments, don't we? And we remember times in our lives where the Lord was faithful. Remember times in our lives where the Lord really cemented who He is to us and who we believe Him to be. And so I have many of those moments throughout the course of my life. That there, there are many times that I can go back to, point to, and say, that's it. That's when the Lord confirmed and solidified who he is to me. And one of my greatest influences, at least in the mid to late 80s, uh, was a singer, songwriter uh, named Rich Mullins. And um, he, he had, I, I believe he had a, just a prophetic voice for the time. I remember his tape. I would listen to his tapes on the way to school with my mom. I remember just loving his music. His music was so deeply theological. It, it wasn't just, you know, the average radio stuff. It, it was <clears throat> it was not surface. And if you grew up with Rich Mullins, you know what I'm talking about. It was deep, deep. I, I, he was just so before his time, but it was very deep. And, and so some of his songs, uh, were written off theological truths, which today I still hold to. You know, I, I've mentioned this before, but a lot of the lyrics I grew up with singing from some of these Christian groups are actual taken from the scriptures. And so uh, when I do scripture memory, my sometimes I get the scripture wrong, but I get the song lyrics right. So uh, that's just kind of the, the, the deal with that. Uh, but I want to share the song with you just for a minute. And it's not really a worship song as much as it's just a deep theological song. And then we're going to talk about it for, for just a minute. Uh, God bless you. I'm so glad you joined us today on this Tuesday. It's supposed to start raining here pretty soon. It's going to wash the pollen out. I'm hopeful uh, for that. This song is called Creed by Rich Mullins. If you want to look it up, uh, you can sing along with me if you want. Oh, and I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven, maker of earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord. Oh, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Oh, he was crucified and dead and buried And I believe what I believe <laughs> Oh, it's what makes me what I am No, and I did not make it But it is making me It is the very truth of God And not the invention of any man Yeah And I believe that he who suffered was crucified, buried, and dead. Oh, he descended into, into hell, and on that third day he rose again. Oh, he ascended into heaven, oh, where he sits at God's mighty right hand. And I believe that he's returning Oh, to judge the quick and the dead and the sons of men And I believe what I believe Oh, it what makes me what I am 
Oh, and it did not make it, but it is making me. It is the very truth of God and not the invention of any man. And I believe what I believe. Oh, and what makes me what I am. Oh, and I did not make it, but it is making me. It is the very truth of God and not the invention of any man. Oh, and I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Oh, I believe, I believe. Oh, and I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of Heaven, Maker of Earth. Oh, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord. Well, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate oh, He was crucified and dead and buried I believe what I believe Oh, it's what makes me what I am Oh, and I did not make it But it is making me It is the very truth of God And not the invention of any man Lord, we turn our hearts to you today. We turn our hearts to our belief in you, to our faith in you, to the truth that has lasted 2,000 years, Lord God. The truth of who you are. Lord, we didn't make this. We didn't create this. We didn't come up with this. Lord God, this is the truth that's been handed down from you, Lord God, to your life. It's your mission. It's who you are. Lord, today I pray in Jesus' name that you would realign our hearts with the truth of what we believe. It is our strength in this season. It's our hope in times of trial. Reconfirm, Lord God, and reestablish, if need be, the truth that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm going to put uh, a couple of links on this video for you uh, because I, I want you to see this song. It's it's got kind of an '80s vibe, but it, it's a beautiful song. And, and if you're if this is your introduction to Rich Mullins, uh, let me just go ahead and say you're welcome <laughs> uh, because it, it's it's gonna it, it's just it's beautiful. As I said before, he, he was a I believe a prophet to the church with his songwriting and he died way before his time but uh, he taught us so much about who Jesus is who the Lord is and I'm thankful for that I, I want to go into John 6 and spend just a minute here today John 6 and, and I'll just be real honest with you John 6 is is one of the most challenging chapters I think that I've found in, in the Bible uh, well, not in the Bible. That, that's, that's, that's a little bit dramatic. Um, in the Gospels. Let's, let's go there. Because it is the moment where Jesus says some things that on the surface seem very, very outlandish, if not flat out crazy. All right, And it's so outlandish that it causes a large portion of the people who are following him, these disciples, to, to leave, to be like, listen, <laughs> we've seen you feed thousands of people with just a couple of fish. We've seen the miracles, but now we're not going any further with you. And y'all, can I submit to you that even today, even today, 2,000 years later, the enemy would love nothing more than to detach you and me from the truth of what we believe about Jesus. He would love to get in the way 
and cause us to question and challenge, and even if possible, get us to the point where we say, man, I I just don't want anything to do with that anymore. I'm gone. I'm out of here. So I want to help you out with something this morning. I want to share this this with you. And let me kind of preface this so I don't have to read the whole thing, but in John 6, Jesus feeds uh, the 5,000 walks on water, goes out to the disciples in the boat, comes back with them. Uh, the next day, picking up in John 6, 22, if you want to follow along. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat. They also saw that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, blah, blah, blah. Some boats from Dr. came and like, uh, let's see, let me, let me skip a little bit. Um, all right, here, here, so the crowd comes to Jesus, and Jesus says this. He says, they're like, when did you get here? Jesus responds. He says, truly I tell you, verse 26, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. So in other words, I filled your belly, <laughs> and so now you're looking for me because you want your next meal, right? He says, don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set a seal of approval on him. So the crowd asked him, what can we do to perform the works of God? What are these works of God that will lead to eternal life? Jesus replied, this is the work of God. Okay, y'all listen. Huge verse right here. Underline in your Bible. This is the work of God that you believe, believe. Everybody say believe. That you believe in the one he has sent, right? The work of God The work of God is to believe in Jesus. Pastor Christian, why did you just sing an old 80s song called Creed about the beliefs that's actually taken straight from the apostles? Why did you just sing that song? Why? Because the work of God, the work of God is that we believe in Jesus. Crowd that asked them, well, what sign then are you going to do that we may see and believe you? They asked. Interesting because they just saw the, the miracle. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it's written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, but my Father in heaven gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said, sir, give us this bread. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So one of the seven I am statements in, in the book of John, the letter of John. I'm the bread of life. No one comes to me will ever be hungry. And no one who believes in me, believe again, there's that word, will ever be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me and yet you do not believe. A lot of, listen, when you see, listen, when you're reading the Bible, this Bible study 101, when you're reading the Bible and you see a word repeat it over and over again. In fact, one of the things I used to do with our students when I was a youth pastor is I would print out a text of, of gospel and I would say, I want you to go through and I want you to, you know, take different colored pencils, circles, underlines, different marks, and I want you to go through all the subjects, all the verbs, all the descriptive words, adverbs, adjectives, all, all that stuff. I want you to, you know, uh, uh, the uh, subjects and the places and the people, and, and I want you to see what stands out to you. Well, this is one of those things where the word believe or belief would stand out because we see it over and over again. The Lord is teaching us, friends, listen, the Lord is teaching us about belief, all right? All right. Uh, No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will ever be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me, and yet you do not believe. Verse 37, everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. There's a promise from the Lord right there. It's beautiful. For I've come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. Friends, listen, the will of God for you, for me, for us, is that everyone that God desires to be saved is saved and not just saved but kept god's desire is for you to stay in belief to stay in faith even during the crises of life that's god's desire for you in fact can i go so far as to say that you don't have to do all the work because jesus has already done the work to keep you 
All that's required of you is to maintain belief. Jesus has done the work. God sent Jesus to grab you, to capture you, to hold you, to keep you through these trials. Our job then, Jesus has done the work. Our job then is to maintain our belief. Pastor Christian, why did you sing a song called Creed that came from the 80s? Pastor Christian, why are you going to close this out by reciting the Apostles' Creed? Why are you talking belief, 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 belief? Because friends, that's our work. That's our responsibility to believe in the one God sent. Jesus said, this is the work of God. God's done his part. Jesus has done his part. This is the work of God that we are to do to believe in the one he sent. Believe, 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 right? That's the work. That's the work. All right. So then the Jews start complaining, right? Because he said, I'm the bread that, that came down from him. So somebody in the kitchen is cooking cinnamon rolls right now. It smells. So I'm going to wrap this thing up because I'm, I'm ready to eat some cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Therefore, the Jews started complaining about him because he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. They're saying, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? His father and mother we know. How can he now say I've come down from heaven? Jesus says, stop complaining. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I'll raise him up on the last day. He goes on and says some other things, and he starts talking about, uh, uh, I tell you, anyone who believes, there's that word believe again. Again, y'all, go through this. Mark all the times the word believe, you see it. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Verse 48, I'm the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and not die. Again, Jesus is talking belief, right? He's using figurative eating language to refer to belief. Remember that. Remember that because it's about to get crazy. All right. He says, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. So the analogy is in the Old Testament, you remember Moses and the Israelites, God rained down manna from heaven every morning. They would eat, get enough for the day, and then it would rot, right? Don't gather more than one day because it'll go bad. Except for the Sabbath, then God gave him enough for two days. If anyone eats of this bread, Jesus says, he'll live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. What's he talking about? He's talking about his death on the cross. Jesus is telling them prophetically, I'm about to give my body, my flesh. It's going to die. And that body is going to be for you. Right? Right? And so when we receive the bread of life that's died for us, we're believing in him. All right? Now, track with me here. At that, the Jews argued among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, they're still thinking food. They're still thinking manna. They're still thinking, you know, loaves of bread and fish just a couple days ago or yesterday. They're still thinking food. Jesus has transferred this conversation. This conversation is in the spiritual now. I'm about to give my life for you. And if you join me in that death by believing in me, then you'll have eternal life. You'll never be hungry or thirsty spiritually again. But they don't get that. They're, they're stuck in the natural here. <clears throat> so Jesus said to them, uh, I'm sorry, where are we at here? Here we go. Verse 53. Y'all, here's I, I promised you crazy. Here it comes. I hope that's not, listen, y'all, I'm not sitting here saying Jesus is crazy or Jesus' teaching is crazy. I'm just saying, listen, this is pretty wild stuff here. So Jesus said in the verse 53, Truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day, because my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate. All right, It's not like that food. And they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. Therefore, verse 60, many of his disciples heard this. They said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Jesus goes on to talk, verse 66, I'm just going to skip around at this point. From this moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. They walked out. It's too tough. So Jesus said to the twelve, you don't want to go away too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Sometimes we skip to that part, don't we? 
Hey, look at Peter, man, the crowd's deserting him. Y'all, listen, let's take a minute and talk about the crowd because y'all, there's legitimate reason for some of those people in that crowd to say, this is crazy, I'm out of here. Jesus is talking about eating of my body, drinking my blood. Y'all, this is weird stuff, right? Now, some in the Christian church over the, the age ages have, have said, oh, he's talking about communion and the process of the body and the blood of Jesus being made present in communion. I, I, don't, I don't think that that does justice to the text because I, I, we don't see that anywhere else. Every time Jesus is either performing communion with the disciples or Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 11, I believe, is, 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 yeah, 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about communion. He's talking about it in, in the, the act of remembering Christ, remembering his death, proclaiming his death. Uh, taking his body, which was broken, taking his blood, which was shed. He, he's recognizing the symbolism of those elements and reminding us of what Jesus did. So nowhere, anywhere else do we see, hey, listen, you got to eat the blood. Nowhere else in the New Testament did Paul or Peter ever teach, hey, listen, you, you're not going to have eternal life unless you eat his body and drink his So th this is a very specific teaching that's rooted, again, we talked about this, in belief. Jesus wants them to understand that the bread that the Israelites ate in the Old Testament with Moses doesn't have the power to save them. It has the power to fill their stomach for a day, but it doesn't have the power to save them. All right, so the... The people are following Jesus. They've been fed, the 5,000. They've been fed with loaves of fish. So now Jesus comes back. They go to him again because, hey, we want to get fed again. Jesus is trying to say, listen, you can follow me for the rest of my life, but and you can feed and you can eat and you can watch this happen and watch these miracles, but it's not going to save you. It may fill your stomach, but it's not going to save you. You are saved by believing that I am the one that God sent by believing in me. That's how you're going to be saved. And then he takes it one step further. Just as that bread didn't have the power to save, this bread, me, when I give my life and I die and my blood is shed, if you share in that death with me, you will receive eternal life by believing, right? Not by going up by believing. Paul teaches that, y'all. We have been crucified with Christ, Paul said. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. I want to say that's Galatians. It's, it used to be like my life verse, and I forgot it. Galatians 2.20. In fact, I don't want to tell y'all wrong here because it's such so important. Give me a second. I believe it's Galatians 2. Galatians 2.21, I believe. I'm almost sure of it. I'm almost sure of it. Give me two seconds. Galatians 2. 20, not 21, 20. I've been crucified with Christ, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This life I live, I live in faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Okay? So that's what we're talking about. We're sharing in his sufferings. We're sharing in his death. By believing in him, we have eternal life. Some people can't handle that. They walk away, they leave. But for those who can believe it, Jesus says, Jesus says, didn't I choose you, the twelve? Didn't I choose you? We belong to him. We belong to him. Does that make sense? I want to share this with you and 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 we don't we don't really quote creeds in our in our movement as 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 a church, as as Pentecostals, as evangelicals. That's not really our, our thing. If you grew up in this, then this will be familiar to you. Uh, but I'd like to ask you to do something, and you can pause the video for a second if you need to, but I'd like you to pull up the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to read the traditional version. There's a traditional and a contemporary that I've found, and I'm taking this one from um, the Reformed Church of America, um, and maybe if, if that pulls up. And I just want to read this together. One of, one of the things that the church has traditionally done through the ages, especially if you go to a more liturgical church where uh, you know it's not music, it's different than us, high church versus low church is they'll quote the creeds. And y'all, I want to submit to you very, very clearly. It's the reason why I sang an old 80s pop tune from Rich Mullins. It's the reason why I shared this text on believing. And it's now the reason why we're going to share and reading together the Apostles' Creed. When we go through times like this, you guys, our belief is what matters. That's our part. What is the work of the Father? To believe in the one that God sent, right? Our work. The rest of the work has been taken care of. Y'all, God has paid the price. He's taken care of everything. Our work, our job is belief. That's it. 
right? Our job is belief. Our job is belief. Don't lose your belief in this season because bad things happen. Don't lose your belief because, man, I just can't go any further. This is ridiculous. Don't lose your belief because people in the church world do stupid things. There's a story even yesterday of a pastor down in Florida, and I'm not going to get into this, uh, who actually arrest warrant and everything because he defied the rules of the sheriff's department, of the mayor of the city. He, he, he defied it. I'm so thankful that our church has a great relationship with our mayor and our city, that our pastor calls up the mayor and the, the fire chief and the police chief and says, hey, listen, here's, here's what we're doing. Are, are we okay to do this? Y'all, there's something special about that. Pastor, thank you for your leadership in this time. When we were watching other pastors do this stupid, stupid stuff, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that what we're doing is not only honoring God, but it's honoring the, the laws and the governments that the Lord has placed us under. And so, y'all, listen, the world is going to look at us and they're going to say, man, there's a church that's doing it right. There's a church that's honoring. There's a church that, that's obeying. There's a church. Y'all, I'm telling you, God is, God is going to bless that. All right, so listen. Apostles' Creed, belief, that's our job. i got to find a tangent there. Belief is our job. Belief is our job. If you've pulled this up, I want you to read this with me. Let's pretend that we're a bunch of Lutherans or Presbyterians or Methodists or Catholics, and let's just, let's just read this together. Listen, this is a 1,700, 1,800-year-old document that was created, it was passed on from, the, from Christ to the apostles and now to us. Let's read this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church. That Catholic is little c, representing the entire universal church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. Friends, God bless you today. The Lord be with you. The Lord keep you. And if, you, if you're struggling with belief right now, listen, let, you may be struggling finding out. You may be struggling here. You may be struggling in your home. Can I submit to you? Bring it back for today. Bring it back to belief. God, help me to have absolute confidence in my faith and my belief in you. The Lord will bless you for your faith. He will bless you for your belief. He is the bread of life. When we believe in Him, when we eat of Him and drink of His blood, symbolically meaning that we are dying with Him and believing with Him and in Him, y'all, that's where the blessings, that's when we're doing the work of the Lord. Hey, listen, God bless you. We'll talk later. As always, if you have prayer requests, needs, put them in the comments, shoot me a message, let me know, and uh, we'll be here for you. Hey, from Pastor Misty, from our team, we love you. God bless you during this season. Bye-bye.